Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Terry and you're watching the AXO. So today we have a big package as you can see here. This is from Prism Plus, which is from a popular professional and gaming monitor brand that they have now expanded into launching their first ever Android TV series in Malaysia. We are lucky enough to get a review unit of our own and this is the Prism Plus Q65 QE Android TV. So before we review the TV, of course we have to set it up. So let's get started. Let's go. You're gonna have to remove the plastic uh, handles on the front and back and then remove this entire top piece of the box. So there are additional uh, foam cardboards to protect the TV from any unwanted knocks and stuff. I'm just gonna remove that. So this is the TV. So we've taken out the TV and I've laid it flat on the bed. So there are also power cable included and then there is two stands for the TV. Another bag of uh, accessories which include quick start guide and the manual, AAA batteries, the remote control itself, the screws for the stands and also the RCA converter. So this is what the stand looks like. It has a V shape. Now let's install the stand. It's gonna be placed here and at the other end. So there are two screws on each side and screw them in and you're done with the stand. Okay, so now that we've installed the TV stand, it's time for us to move this into the studio to give you a better look. Let's go. Hey guys, so we just moved the Prism Plus TV into our studio. We don't have much space, unfortunately, so this is the best setup that we can do for now to show you the features and stuff. So the setup process was actually really easy. All you needed to do was just get the TV out of the box, uh, install the two stands uh, which only has two screws on each side on the TV and you're basically done with the TV itself. Now moving forward then that would require you to plug in the uh, power cable and of course setting up the remote to turn it on. If you didn't use the remote there's also the power button which is located on the right I think. Also you would need to pull off the plastic so let's do that now. And there we go. Okay, so now that the TV is fully prepped, we're ready to turn it on. So let's quickly set up the remote. As you can see, this is what the remote looks like. It has a more traditional layout with like full buttons, you know, all the numpad arrows. Uh, you have the quick access buttons to your favorite streaming apps like the YouTube, Google Play, uh, Netflix, of course, Amazon Prime Video, if you're subscribed to that. And you're gonna notice this button here, which is a dedicated Google Assistant button. That's why it looks so familiar. And there's also a mic installed here. So basically this can also act as a recorder kind of thing. So you can just do Google searches or commands straight from the uh, remote itself. So the remote does use two AAA batteries. And similar to other remotes, the battery cover is using the slide out motion. And we're ready to turn it on. So the receiver is on the bottom here, right below the Prism Plus logo. So the indicator turns green. Prism Plus Android TV. So this Android TV is uh, version 10, which is the latest uh, Android TV version on all of your Android boxes and whatever. So, so currently it's set to HDMI. So when there's no signal, uh, it's going to just cycle through a couple of random wallpapers. So let's go into the settings. So that's the UI, you get picture mode, sound mode, there's also a sleep timer and choosing the source. So let's go to settings. First off, I'm going to say the response is super fast. Like on this version of Android, the, every button press is near instant. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, sure. So uh, because this is an Android TV, which is uh, based on Google, you can easily log in with your uh, Google powered smartphone. Okay, so we just need to open up the Google app. Set up my device. 
so it's searching for devices it's connecting and yes this is the code so I'm just gonna connect it to our Wi-Fi choose my Gmail account tap in my Wi-Fi password checking if that's correct so instead of typing on the TV itself you can just use your Google uh, powered smartphone to expedite the whole login process and make the whole thing just smoother and easier so currently it's copying uh, my Gmail account and some of the info that I use like YouTube history and stuff like that everything will already look familiar on the TV itself when it's all set up while we wait I just want to say that the stands are actually very firm there's no wobble at all on the TV so we managed to log into our Google accounts on the Android TV itself and we're finally on the home screen so this is the Android TV 10's UI it's actually really really fast so obviously there are the Netflix, YouTube app uh, all these are already pre-installed so basically here you get all your usual uh, apps as well and because this is an Android TV you can access the Google Play Store and install additional apps like um, Red Bull TV, Crunchyroll if you're an anime fan there's also Facebook Watch, Keep, WeTV, ICE video, uh, ICE for all the Chinese dramas. So when you pre-order the Prism Plus TVs, you actually get a three-month free subscription to the WeTV VIP service, and that gets that gives you all access to all the content on the app. And of course, you can install some games from the Play Store, which are compatible with Android TV. Not all games are available, but you do have some choices from the Play Store. Also, uh, for music, you can install Spotify, uh, KKBox, there's also Deezer, Tidal, if you're a Tidal user, that's great. So that's the Google Play Store. Uh, let's go back to the home screen. So on the bottom here, there are just uh, previews and highlights from each app that you have. Uh, let's say like the Google Play Store, some recommended apps for you to install. The great thing is just now when I, when I logged in with my Gmail account, it already recognized my Netflix account as well, so it automatically logged in for me. So that's why I'm able to immediately have all these previews shown to me. And also the Google Play movies and TV and stuff like that. So this entire UI, you can customize it to your own liking. Like how do you want to rearrange them, uh, reorder, maybe put Netflix at the top. That's up to you. So you can actually uh, click here to speak or just press the Google Assistant button here. And also you can uh, bring up the on-screen keyboard if you don't want to use voice. This is where you can manage your inputs. There are three HDMI ports for you to connect all your different devices. So there's also a dedicated source button for you to immediately switch between your devices. Within the Android TV UI, uh, this is the input changer and for the dedicated source, that's going to be from the TVs. A native menu UI but for me when I connect all my devices together it's gonna be the PS5 the Nintendo switch and maybe my laptop but with Android TV I don't think I need to connect my laptop anymore this shows that your Wi-Fi is connected and all the different Wi-Fi connections that you can connect to here we go into settings you can change your inputs uh, manage your accounts and your sign-ins all the different apps that you have and when you've used them also the device preferences so like you can change your lang language keyboard uh, power settings maybe your sound storage home screen shop mode and more so it also has chromecast built in that lets you cast your content from your phone directly to the tv itself so you can also add bluetooth accessories and that also means maybe bluetooth keyboards or bluetooth mouse or a TWS earbud it's totally up to you so it's kind of like a smartphone but on a much larger scale and yeah you can easily connect any Bluetooth devices to it and uh, use it with the TV and you might have noticed it says TV BLE remote and that is because the remote control is powered by Bluetooth and BLE basically stands for Bluetooth low energy and so it doesn't consume that much battery as compared to uh, the usual infrared one. You can basically point it anywhere and it will still recognize your presses. So let's let's check out the TV's UI itself. So changing volume, okay, this is how the volume would look like or appear. Uh, max volume is 100. Okay, so for menu, you can change the picture mode uh, to vivid, standard, movie, user, spot. 
and for sound you can change to standard, music, sport or movie. Sleep timer you can set when does the TV turn off. And source you can change between the sources that are available like all your HDMI's and stuff and also your maybe your digital TV box or your AV system. There is also when you press more you can actually change the picture and sound settings on the TV. So for picture, you can change certain profiles here. Vivid standard sport user movie. And also if you want to turn on dynamic backlight, that's also available. So this, it automatically uh, changes the backlighting according to the ambient lighting that's in the room. So you can change the brightness, contrast, saturation, uh, sharpness as well, and also the gamma and color temperature. So these are just some of the basic apps with backlight on, you cannot change the backlight. And there's also advanced video where you can adjust even further settings like uh, DNR or adaptive luma control, local contrast control. To be honest, I don't even know what these are, but I'll definitely look into it. And for sound, you can change some of these sound profiles as well and have further settings into the bass and treble levels. Same with the DTS Studio Sound, you can enable all this, surround true volume. So these are gonna make your movies sound even better on the TV speaker itself. It depends how you connect your audio devices. Uh, let's say you have a sound bar, you're gonna wanna connect on the SPDIF port, the optical port, or maybe you wanna connect through Bluetooth. Uh, that's also available as well. Okay, so let's have a quick look at uh, how some of the apps look on the TV. Let's check out Netflix. This is my profile. Okay, Legend of Exorcism. Roni Kenshin, good movie. Overall, the quality actually looks really... Like the UI itself looks really clear. Let's try this. I don't know if this would cause copyright or anything, but I don't think I'll be able to show this in the video. Okay, so that's pretty much the unboxing and setup of the Prism Plus Q65 QE Android TV. So the entire setup is actually very easy. It's kind of like a two-step thing. So you just take the TV out of the box, screw on the stands, uh, plug in the power cable and you're ready to explore the TV. Of course, there's also the login process, which can be done through your Google powered smartphone or on your iPhone as well, as long as you can access your Google account. And once you've logged in, you've pretty much logged in to everything else if the services are connected to your Google account, like the Netflix and YouTube app and stuff like that. So we are working on a review for the TV. So do stay tuned to the website as well as for our review video, which will probably come up maybe next week. In the review, we're definitely going to go deeper into the image quality and the sound quality and stuff like that for the speakers. Um, this is just a quick feature walkthrough, a, a rundown of some of the features that are available on the Prism Plus Android TV. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. My name is Terry and I will catch y'all the next time.